yeah, we got Kelson versus Rafa group stage games day one. Um, another decisive match in the early stages of the QPL kickoff. And there's games like this that, like, okay, raising nose foot shouldn't have been as um, decisive as it was. But this game is really, really decisive. And I think going into the series, I feel like Kilson actually has an advantage against Rafa uh, at this point in a tournament. Um, I feel like Rafa's... This tournament system does not work with Rafa's strengths, in my opinion. So I think this is a very hard game for Rafa to win. I think it's a very hard tournament for Rafa to win. I think he did really well coming um, third overall at QuakeCon. But I think when there's a, a full round robin stage, uh, I don't think he can excel the same as if he's getting those uh, big knockout matches uh, on a stage of some sort with a live audience and things like that. Because Rafa does really, really well in those situations. And I'd say there's no one who does better than him in those situations. But uh, yeah, we've got uh, Corrupted Keep to start things off. We have got Galena Eisen. I think when you see an opponent picking either the Galena or the Eisen, the other one is like a perfect matchup in some respects. But it's been relatively steady off the beginning. I think there's a bit of respect from each of them. Because they're both phenomenal players. Kilson going into the tournament definitely looked like a top three contender. But he heard the sounds there of Rafa pulling back, so he's like, okay, I can push on. I'm not too bothered. That rocket is actually kind of ludicrous. It's kind of like a half spam slash predictive rocket. But it uh, kind of stunts everything that Rafa wants to do. And the LG follow-up, I mean, I'd expect it to put Kilson in a slight advantage, even with him having basically natural health, and that's it. But he doesn't want to conclude a fight yet. And he hears the light armor getting picked up. So he's definitely behind by now. Neither of them committed before. Dude, that turret just wrecked him, actually. Yeah, now he's definitely at a disadvantage. And he really doesn't want to fight. I don't know why he chose to fight it like that. He had limited rockets left, but... LG would have been okay. Heavy machine gun was fine, but he just wasn't really dodging. He was, it's like he was expecting the heavy machine gun to kill it a lot sooner. I need to get my face off of this as well, actually, so you can see that properly. It's not Meng Knight, but I'll, uh, I'll take it off now. It's no biggie. We didn't miss any kills and uh, specials. Interesting ju- Ooh, the rocket's really good. The rocket kind of saves him from a follow-up. Even though positionally it's difficult for Rafa to follow-up, he could well have rocket jumped, though, towards him. I don't think that would have even been a bad move. And I didn't dislike the jump from Kelson going across. Usually you don't want to jump over LG. But it was kind of a surprise and he managed to find the closest gap to get across. And walking down the stairs actually is really, is, is far more dangerous, I'd say. But at the moment, Kelson's getting kind of dominated. So he's not punished off the spawn. He hasn't really got weapons. At the moment, he's trying to figure out where the hell Rafa's going and where the hell he can go in order to safely pick up, pick some up. I think he heard Rafa go towards the heavy, so he's like, okay, rockets will be safe, but if I go to LG, I've really got very little to work with. Even though heavy machine gun is a super nice weapon, he's done some great damage here, in fact. And Rafa's picking a very odd position. He's kind of facing him up front when he can make himself far less vulnerable by standing behind the fence. But at the same time, if that's what it takes to make Kilson confident in taking a fight against him, he had a, has a stack advantage. So I guess he probably feels like if he's opening himself up, then Kilson will be less shy about doing damage to him. Kilson even not shy about going through. But Rafa really wants to extend the advantage. He's even walking through in order to take damage from the totem and then conclude the fight. So he's taken a, a decent chunk of damage. It's going to be close to 100-100 for Kilson. 
And I've really been not timing at all, so... That'll be heavy taken. Mega's taken. So everything's gone to Rafa now. His stack's great. There's a light. He sees it, but he really wants to do damage first. There's two great rockets. And uh, it almost looked like he got himself. But I think he, he should have left after the two rockets. Because being able to keep up that fight going at the damage output that he had was... I mean, it would have been insane if he had the kill there. It's like he's just trying to push him out of control. So he did lots of damage. And by the next rotation, Rafa was still facing him a little bit. Which he probably shouldn't have in hindsight. But I'm not entirely sure if Kilson was expecting to get the kill at that stage. He did about 200 damage in the fight before. I think uh, Rafa's kind of given himself uh, up fairly easily. And he's sort of doing the same again. I find the more questionable moves from Rafa, in fact. He's trying to keep the pressure on so that Kilson can't e get an easy stack up. But he's giving up so much. I'm actually, I actually want to really recycle through the last minute of play. So he gets killed there. He did 200 damage. How much damage is he doing here? So he's done about another 100. And the machine gun... Yeah, I think Rafa was probably expecting to hit more then. And now Kilson's picking up items. And that's actually quite a, uh, an intense push through. Uh, to, from Kilson to follow up. So through the teleporter... Rafa taking that risk gives Kelson a big advantage because no longer does he have to worry about how to get out uh, with uh, Rafa in front of him. And that's very... I'd say it's over-aggressive from Rafa and I think he's trying to finish off a kill which he's actually still kind of far away from getting. Unless he was hoping to hit a certain really critical shots. It feels like something a lot more risky for Rafa than he's used to doing. So... He's allowing Kelson to get three frags in order for him to get just one more advantage. Like, it's it's not really a favorable trade. That's kind of weird, in my opinion. Those are really good rockets from Kelson. You hit the first rocket there and you just feel great about the follow-ups because you're bouncing Rafa everywhere and he can't control himself whatsoever. That's brutal, man. Holy crap. Rafa's not giving that much respect. He's normally the player who... who gives respect to everybody. But maybe he's not expecting Kilson to face him that much because Kilson's kind of a passive player. Alright, Rafa does get on Mega. And uh, Kilson sees he's got rockets and is like, hell no, I'm not pushing through the uh, the choke point. That would be suicidal. So Kilson's looking for the kills basically when he feels he has a strong possibility to do so. Or when he sees Rafa over-aggress a little bit. And Dark Flap and Chat saying, Rafa seems to have played a lot more aggressive at QuickCon than you'd expect. I don't think you're wrong, actually, but I wanna, I'm going to keep going through his games, and I think we'll see the trend, because I I haven't been able to see that much. You've probably seen more than me, so I don't know if I actually even saw this match uh, when it was live. And again, it's this, these rockets. He sees the 100 damage, or he can basically see from the trajectory whether or not it's going to do 100 damage, and as soon as he's got that information, he's like, all right, I can move in. Even if I take some, I've got 225s beside me. And um, wow, Rafa should go down again here. My life sustains you. I think if Rafa didn't put down the second turret, that first one would have still been doing damage. Because Kilson wasn't going after it. I might be looking into it too much because the turret could have been on super low health. So I, I don't really know about that. Very awkward fight from Kilson. He should have finished that off a lot more cleanly, in fact. That kill was kind of free. And I like that Kilson moves away because it's an awkward fight for him to take at the rocket spawn because of that turret's in the way. 
Well, that's a really sick meta from Rafa. Really, really sick. But he's playing from further and further behind. There's items coming up. Again, he's hitting a nice rocket, but Kelson wants to slow the game down really, really soon. He doesn't want to fight. He just wants to leave. And even that light armor is like, if I go for that light armor, I'm still in a position where I have to fight against Rafa. So I like that he's just running away from as much danger as he can. And he's not being greedy for items. It's about survival. It's not about stacking up. And sometimes to stay alive, you don't want to take the items. And I think that's another, that's something else that some people uh, struggle with. Well, this is really good damage with the totem, actually. He does lose out his life, but he's killed a lot of time over the last minute. And he's three frags ahead of Rafa. So this is a point where he can hear Rafa coming in from one side or the other, and he should be able to run away with relative ease unless Rafa hits an incredibly good opening rocket. Oh, that was a fast rush. I did not hear Rafa coming back. He's managed to steal an item. He's probably going to die again here. Unless he's done enough damage to Rafa that he has to go back for items. But at this stage, Rafa's going to take even more risks. And Kelson's going to... Uh, have to be on his toes. Yeah, he's just constantly going. Just make him chase. Look at that. It's the perfect timing with Mega. He hasn't seen Mega in a while. I don't even know if he's heard Mega in a while. And he... He manages to still... Get these really good switcheroos on Rafa. Where he can take the items. Just because Rafa has to make these pushes. He's, he's picking out. absolutely the right spots to go to. Um... To maximize his chances of survival. I think it's really, really cool. Kodisha with the 68 goddamn months. Holy crap, Kodisha. Thanks so much, man. I heart you and appreciate you. One more till 69. <laughs> Kappa. But that was a nice map from Kelson. I do feel, though, that Rafa played it a bit over-aggressively. Um, and could have kept himself alive for longer in certain instances. Or kept his lead for longer. And forced Kelson to make the riskier plays. But in the end, it was kind of Rafa make, taking the risky plays. And I think... I don't know if that's an... I hope that's a fair assessment. So I feel there was a lot of instances there which were maybe 50-50 or like maybe 60-40 in favor of Rafa. But when, he, when you've got a 60-40 situation, it never all, it can feel like that wasn't the case if you lose it against a player like Kelsen. Because they just do have a good chance of hitting those great shots. And if you are, have to hit slightly harder shots to make it work. I don't know, maybe it's not a 60-40 to begin with, but against a lot of other players, maybe against players that he's practicing with. Maybe it could have been. I think, uh... I think we got Kodisha and, uh... Um... Neg and Tewepu are all around that area. It's pretty nuts, man. It's really nuts. But okay, we got to start here. We've got Sorlak versus Nyx, which is a super interesting matchup. This is something that you wouldn't really... Like, basically, the rule set allows you to see it. Otherwise, you probably would never get this kind of matchup. But that was a nice first kill from uh, Kelson. I like his use of the uh, Ghost Walk. He won't have it anymore, so it's just about doing as much damage as possible. Because if he goes up the bounce pad, he dies. He, he just needs to output everything. He's doing it again. It's a little bit of an investment. He should know that there's going to be no kill. The ability is now out from Rafa. Obviously, if Kilson decided not to stick himself down in that little pit and he went up to rail, he probably could have survived for longer. I really like that jump. Oh, dude. And I think this is what Kilson was kind of getting known for throughout the tournament, is just hitting the sickest rocket to rail angles all the time. He was so consistent with that. He's even got the confidence there of the lightning gun to continue in the fight versus a stacked Sorlag. Oh, man, that hurts. It was a good rocket jump. He needs to get onto that health bubble and he can't find it. Did he kill himself? He did. Are we 
we are we are at source, right? Yeah, we're, we're watching on source, guys. It's just gonna look a little bit weird on um, when a vod's being restreamed. So again, I can't do much. Oh, he's gonna have his ghost walk up in a second. Even though Kilson's got a bad stack, he's not in the worst position ever because of the amount of weaponry that he has and the fact that he's got his ability up. He just needs to keep surviving. Oh, okay. He really didn't hear where the hell he was just then. That totally messed with him. Those kind of things shouldn't be happening, but I don't exactly blame Kilson. Unreturned rail. He needs to keep up with that. If he takes a rail, he's in a lot of trouble. So he needs to make those angles for Rafa as hard as possible. His timing is on. Timing's good. Rafa's in a spot of trouble at the moment. He's got to hit a clutch shot and he's not going to be able to. So again, it's Kilson's timing and uh, positioning. And then these anticipatory rockets that are winning him situations at the moment. And there's the ghost walk back, so he can go back to making those good moves. Again, he sits on the mega health. Rafa's still wanting to fight him there. I, I, I really don't like what Rafa's doing there. I feel it's quite abnormal for me to say that about what Rafa does, because of the level he brings to duel. But these are really, like, I think he's overvaluing the stack that he has with Sorlag. And he's not been able to force out... Like, if he forces out the Ghost Orc, it's kind of, I guess, worth it. But he needs to do that, and Kilson's being rock solid in terms of his timing with it. Okay, that's a good roll. Even though he takes a shot as well, he's now hit two for one, and he's got his ability up. This is a really nice... And he's hitting the nicest rails as well. So Rafa's got to be incredibly careful. It, has, the next, has the next mega been taken? Well, I guess it will help now. If that rail is also after the mega, that's super nice. He's even going aggressive with it, so it must have been. I'd be very surprised if it wasn't, but keeping up with uh, Rafa there is very, very difficult. Now, if Rafa did a turn and went back up to Connector, that Tribot spam is legit. I think that took him a wet second to realize where he was coming from. Well, it's going to be Rafa going over towards the Mega Health. Kilson's already, like, changing the pace up. He hasn't been able to construct an opportunity like before, and he's not going back at the bottom to try and get a rail on the Mega Health. I think he believes that's a little bit too predictable, since that's what he did on the last rotation. So he's kind of keeping things fresh and making sure that he isn't making, like, an obvious pattern that Rafa can get a read on. That's the only way that I could understand why he wouldn't go for more damage on the Mega Health, just because Rafa would be too ready to fight back at him. But then on the next rotation, if he goes for the Heavy, which he didn't, well, on this occasion he went for Mega, but on the next rotation, if he goes for Heavy, then he probably can look at doing damage again. Okay, that was a really good shot from Rafa. Finally, he's getting some unreturned damage. Two great rockets there. He needs this heavy super bad. Timing was a little sketchy just then, just because there was a window of opportunity for Rafa to do some damage. Is he going to chase for this? He needs a health bubble of some sort. That went a bit wrong. He really... He needed a health bubble or he needed to do more damage on Rafa beforehand. That, it looks like some part of Kelson's plan went wrong. Or he ran out of... Let's look back at that, because that, that's very interesting why he died there. So it takes the rail. So now he... Is this the point where he realizes that... 
Yeah, he's really sketched out about taking the heavy armor or hanging around for it. And he can't, so he couldn't go through the teleporter then because Rafa was coming from below. So if he goes up to try and get to the light armor, then he's in a lot of trouble. And Rafa would still, even if he continued through the teleporter, would still have a good angle for him. So now he's chasing. So we've done 170 plus damage. Um, Rafa still probably has more than 100 health and armor in the in the back. So health, collective health and armor. Okay, so we do get heavy taken. Mega should be taken now as well. Now, Kelson... Okay, this is the interesting bit, because Kelson decides to go to elbow with the Ghost Wall. I think... Okay, so he does that. He hasn't done this much damage. He gets poisoned on. There's no mega health. It's as if he looked over towards the mega, expecting it to be up, although Rafa took it just before that fight. So I think the mistake there from Kilson was using the ghost walk to re-engage from elbow. I don't know 100% obviously if he thought that Mega was going to be up, but he needed something, some health there to remove the damage over time. Which he couldn't find out either connector nor the Mega health. So now Kilson's like in a bit of trouble. He used the Ghost Walk. He died shortly after. He's now got refragged. He's still got 15 seconds until the Ghost Walk's back up. So these are good defensive rockets, actually. These are really, really nice. We've seen uh, from a game before where I think it was Saiga or someone. Instead of holding back and just trying to do damage, he's trying to run through while he's getting attacked on. Okay. Nice work there from Rafa to defend that. But Kilson's damage output has still been good. Going in with the machine gun, that's perfect calculation of how much health Rafa has left. And it looks like Rafa didn't have to the second timing. Whereas it looks like Kilson did. And I'm pretty sure timing or maybe Rafa hoping that Kilson wouldn't be that fast to get to him. That could also be in a situation. Maybe Rafa did have the perfect timing, but it was also like, God, I really hope that Kilson doesn't turn up as fast as as fast as you just has. And that's just like a that's like one of the factors, one of the many factors he's considering right there. Where it's like, okay, well, if this is a a variable that really has changed, then all of a sudden the situation becomes hard to handle. But if Rafa does want to defend there or to stay alive, he's got to run around the map on a quite a low HP. So maybe he thinks it's worth it dying there just in, in order to get to the mega health. So there might be an instance where he's not mad at all about it. 14 HP. Timing for mega is good. Timing for when Rafa can make it to the fight is also good. He is available right now. You can see before committing to that room, he wants to see if Rafa's going to go around the corner. Even though there's resources in there for him to go for, if he commits to the angle and Rafa does come around, there's no way he gets those resources in time. I think you could also be right. So Maganite in chat saying he may have thought that Kilson wouldn't push uh, with the amount of weapons he had. That's a really, really disgusting rocket to rail. Because Kilson only had the machine gun, but the fact is he seemed to have perfect understanding of Rafa's health and armor. So... The push makes total sense at the same time. I think Rafa maybe should have realized that too. So Kilson's a frag ahead. He just wants to... Wow. That's a really, really clutch rocket. He needs to get away though. No ghost walk or anything like that. He's hitting the sickest defensive rails. And there's the mega health there. So at this point, I'd say GG basically. He's already hit an insane amount of damage on Rafa. Again, some of these defensive shots from Kilson. I, 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 it's almost as if Rafa's underestimated a little bit what Kilson's capable of. Because historically, Rafa's done really, really well versus Kilson. I want to I check that. I'm going to check those stats in a moment. See if I can find them on plus forward or something. Now Kilson is 10 seconds beforehand. Mathematically possible to make a comeback. So he delays the spawn as long as possible. Rafa miss doesn't get like the insta re uh, refrag. So Kilson celebrating his victory there. He should be buzzing with that. That's a really, really, really big win. Um, and it's in day one, round four. 
And having beaten Rafa means that right now Kilson knows he's contesting for a top spot. And right now Rafa know sorry, Kilson knows that his shape is enough to be contesting the top spot. So his his confidence right now should be through the roof. I'm gonna quickly find some stats though on uh, on that and have a look. We'll compare. I'm gonna look at Quake Live stats and also Quake Champion stats. So Rafa's three for one in Quake Live, which is pretty big still. Uh, kill some Rafa. And Rafa's two for zero, now two for one in Quake Champions. So Rafa's got a really, really good um, track record against Kilson. So maybe that's another reason that some of those decisions happen, just because Rafa knows that he's got a good track record against him competitively. So I don't think he's necessarily underestimating Kilson, just maybe thinking that 